2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through verse 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, the outward person is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18, while we do not, thank you, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which we which are seen are not seen are reverse 18 first part again while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things for the things which are Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. God's preferred future. Today I want you to think about this seeing beyond. Say that with me. Seeing beyond. I got that side. Let's see if I can get this side. Seeing. Y'all shout to them. Seeing beyond. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for just allowing us once again to gather to be a part of this fellowship and to be a part of this Sunday morning worship experience. Thank you for drawing us close in our praise, in our worship, in our adoration. You allowed us to lift up holy hands. You allowed us to sing praises to your name. In this morning, Father, we just want to say thank you for praising and for singing and for praying. Help us now to proclaim you, Lord of Lords, that which you have told me in private. Speak out publicly. The same God that prepares in private, you're the same God that declares in public. So, Father, we pray now that you would speak to your people. Father, let them know that you're not speaking to their physicalness but to their spiritualness. Father, that that person that's inside of them that will live forever, speak to them. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray now that the enemy is defeated. We thank you for it. We plead the blood and say, God, have your way. Open our ears and open our minds. Open our hearts for the sharing of the word of God. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. And amen. As you're being seated, tell your neighbor, say, I'm ready to receive. Seeing beyond. Seeing beyond. Brothers and sisters, I believe that God wants us to look beyond the natural of what we see. He wants us to see spiritually and biblically. Just seeing the natural would draw us closer to the things that are happening naturally. But I believe, brothers and sisters, God wants us to not only see with our eyes, but see with our spiritual eyes through the word of God. I believe the Lord is telling us this morning that many of us get caught up in seeing with our physical eyes much too often. In 2016, the movie Hidden Figures came out. Y'all remember Hidden Figures? Taraji P. Henson, who happens to be one of my favorite actresses, Kevin Costner, Octavia Spencer, and other African-American women who were in that movie showing how the 50s and the 60s had so mistreated them, but they would not allow their mistreatment to keep them down. Kevin Costner says to 
Taraji or Taraji says to Kevin Costner, who is portraying Katherine Johnson, and Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson. She says to Kevin Costner one day, as she's working out the numbers, she says, I have to look beyond. There's something about looking beyond what you see. When you get caught up in what you see, it will cause you to get caught up in what's happening and therefore you get caught up and the inertia of the pull of your, of your circumstances will cause you to think sometimes that that's all there is to life. God has things in our future that he has specially stored up for us in his preferredness future for us. God has levels that you can never imagine. God wants to do unlimited things in your life, in my life, for which only he can get the credit. God wants to do mighty, and he wants to do incredible. And I chase you down to tell you he wants to do the impossible. The issue many times is that we don't trust God through our current situations. We get blinded by the facts. We get blinded by the words that they tell us. We get blinded by the news. We don't look at God would we prefer, but we prefer to listen to those around us. I know I won't get many amens on that one because many of us are just so ashamed that to be honest and to say, yes, I listened to somebody when I shouldn't have listened to them. I, I, I was looking at something when I shouldn't have been looking at that situation because I put more faith in the situation than I put in a God who could work out the impossible. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I read it to you last week, that we are called to live by faith and not by sight. In the movie, Taraji says, you got to look beyond what you see. You got to look beyond what is already there. Taraji tells Kevin Costner, if we just continue to look at what we know, we will never get to what we believe. Lord have mercy. If you continue to always look at and have confidence in what you know, you will never get to what you really want and what God really wants you to believe and to trust him. I'm not saying doubt the facts. I believe in facts. I'm a science person. I'm from a science background. I know facts matter. But I'm not just a physical science person. I've been created in the image of God. And therefore, I am a spiritual being operating in this natural. Y'all ain't with me. You think you're looking at me. I tell you this morning, you are not really looking at me. You're looking at what houses the real me. Y'all still ain't caught up with me. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is that you have a you inside of you. I'll talk to the other side, see if you can get it. Sister, we have a, we have a us inside of us that when people look at us, they ain't really seeing us. Lord have mercy. Can, can I just help somebody? All I'm trying to tell you, you got an inward person that is on standby or really wants to be on guard and there for you all the time believing what you read in scripture and therefore declaring to this physical nature that yes, you got a physical nature, but oh, you got something bigger and better and better inside of you that you really should be depending on. I wish I had some help seeing beyond the natural possibilities, the natural limitations, the natural inertness of just well, this is all it can be. But I'm calling you this morning to believe that we got to look beyond the natural and see the supernatural. You don't see supernatural with your natural eyes. 
Supernatural is to be discovered and distinguished by seeing it with your spiritual eyes. The person that is inside of you, that's the real you, that's the one that you want speaking to you. Can I get about three witnesses? All I'm trying to help you to understand this morning is that we spend too much time believing in our naturalness rather than our spiritualness. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm more spiritual than I am natural. This, this Bible tells me that this natural body, this, this, this house of clay will dissolve, but that which God has breathed into and said you are a living being, that which God has breathed in will live forever. And that's who needs to talk and change the world need to change your dynamic, need to change your, your circumstances, need to change your impossibilities into possibilities because that person will speak until you stop saying what you see. Lord have mercy. I, I wish I could really preach this and say it like I, like I really want. I, I'm, I'm trying to find in my vocabulary a word or a something that can help you to understand that that person inside of you wants to do more talking to your situation than your physical body should be talking to your situation. Y'all ain't with me. What, what I'm trying to tell you is that your body is telling you that you're sick. And you say, yes, I don't feel good. But the spiritual body inside of you say, keep saying I'm healed. Keep saying I'm healed. You, your body is saying, oh, you don't have a job. Or you don't have a husband or a wife. Or you don't have this amount. But your spiritual body is saying, God can do all things. All things are, are possible through Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Do, do you understand you got to do more talking with your spiritual body and the spiritual person than you do with the natural? Three quick points and I'll let you go. Number one, verse 16 says, do not lose heart noble. Look at it carefully. It says, do not lose heart. The Apostle Paul is the writer. And from chapter 1 all the, all the way to this chapter and beyond, Apostle Paul is telling us that he has been in trials and tribulations. He's been, he's been put in jail. He's been beaten. He has life circumstances. He says, I'm disappointed because one of my compadres did not show up when I needed him to show up. Lord have mercy. Y'all sitting there so quiet. I know it's cold outside, but it's warm in here. Amen, somebody. He says, one of my brother, one of my one of my one of my boys didn't show up when I asked him to show up. And he says, and it disappointed me because we got so much work to do. He says, people are talking about me and it's just getting on my last nerve. Just read the read it. He's he's telling us that all these things are happening to him. But he says, therefore, I do not lose heart. Can I help somebody this morning? That whenever somebody is talking about you, don't lose heart. When people are not treating you right, don't lose heart. When the job lays you off, tell them Saranara because you are not the source of my strength. You got God is the one that's going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. You just have to look at him and say, God, I know I won't lose heart. If I stay close to you, you'll cause me not to faint. Paul says, therefore, do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day after day. Y'all should shout right there. He says, this outward person, this outward, this physical nature is perishing and this is where we often hear at funerals about corruptible putting on incorruption, that this physical body, it is decaying. From the day you were born, you started to die. I'll talk to the other side. From the day that you were born, even though you were growing, you were already dying. This body, this temple, this, this physical nature is not meant to live forever. 
And if I had about five saved folk, I would say, I would, I would hope y'all would say, Pastor, I'm so glad that I don't have to stay here for eternity. I don't want to be here for as long as this world spins around. I'm grateful that God has gone somewhere to create a place for me because this is not my home. I'm just a sojourner in this land. I, I, I know. I know, I know. See, if that was the old church, they would be running around, shouting, jumping up and down, and saying, glory to God, this is not my home. But I know we get so tired, uh, tethered to this world and the things that we like, uh, the stuff we got, the, 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 the things that you think make you happy. Lord have mercy, y'all ain't with me. We get, so we get so tethered to it that we lose focus that this is not where I am going to ultimately end up. God got something better for me, and it's over in glory. I, I know, I know. Y'all get afraid of your mortality. We all get a little answer when we start talking about our own mortality. But Brother Tom, it gives me joy to know that God has gone somewhere to prepare a place that when this body separates from me, I'm going to say that again. When this body separates from me, he's got something better. Don't lose heart. And the wonderful thing about this, 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 this verse is he, says, is he says, don't lose heart. Because God is working a miracle right as you live. You missed it, didn't you? L let me show it to you. He says, even though our outward man is perishing, dissolving, decaying, he said, yet the inward person is being born, renewed every day. <laughs> I love that about God. He says, every day I'm doing something on the inner man that causes you to be renewed every day. You, every day you wake up, you're being renewed. Every day you get in contact and let the Lord talk to you in your quiet time, he's renewing your spirit. Amen, somebody. God is working a miracle in our physicalness that shows us that in our spiritualness, that even though our physical nature will die, our spiritual nature will never die if you belong to Jesus. Don't lose heart. Tell your neighbor, say, don't lose heart. He'll renew your strength. Has anybody ever had God renew your strength? You ever been down? And the Lord just, you don't need God to say a whole lot. If you really just listen to God, he don't, he don't give you a whole lot of paragraphs. God can tell you and correct everything by just a couple of words. He knows just the words. He says, I can renew you every day. Just sit in my presence. I will renew you. Anybody need to be renewed? You've been going through something, Paul says, he gets renewed even though all these things are happening to him. He gets renewed every day. Every day, every day, God renews us. Somebody say, thank the Lord that he renews. Number two, not only does he say, don't lose heart. Number two, he says, listen, and I love this. He says, what you're going through is just a transitional phase. I'll talk to somebody else. Tasha, he says, what I'm going through is transitional. It don't last forever. Ain't nobody happy about that? Uh, what, what I'm experiencing today, he said, is temporary and transient. What I'm trying to tell you is what the songwriter says, problems don't last always. Afflictions don't last always. And, and, and I don't believe Paul is making light of them, but listen to verse 17. He says, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. Everybody say that. It's for a Do y'all see that? What you're going through this morning, if you didn't come to church, if you're looking at me, it's only for a moment. 
only for a little while. But watch this. He, in both of these verses, 16 and 17, he points out that even though things look and appear bad, they're not really bad. Look, look at verse 17. He says, for your light afflictions, which is but for a moment. Shout right there. Y'all missed your shout. Say amen. Thank God. They're only for a moment. But watch what he says. Is working for a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Y'all don't know when to shout. I, I just have to tell y'all when to shout, right? <laughs> y'all just get lost and you, you miss your shout. He says the affliction that you're going through, he says it's only for a moment. But while you're going through the moment, God's doing something greater and doing something better that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't gone through the problem. I, I, talk, I talk to church people who've been around the church for a while. He says, while you're going through your problems, they don't last long. But only do they not last long, they're working out a situation that where you want to be and what you've been asking God to do, he's getting you there in a, heart, in a, in a better way. Let, let, me, let me see if I can explain it like this. How many of y'all, um, when, when my daughter was in school in, in, at Hampton, uh, when we would go see her, we had to go through, what is the tunnel? Some, some tunnel we had to go through. So y'all been there, okay. So when you go through this tunnel, and uh, I don't really like tunnels. Because when you, when you, when you, you know, it's all right to go in for a minute. I, I like the little, you know, like half a minute, you know, you go, you go in and you, and you come out. Y'all understand what I'm saying? The, the tunnel don't last long. I like when you just start in by time, it gets a little bit dark, you're coming out. You can see sunlight. I'm talking to somebody. T -t -t tunnels, tunnels get you um, from point A uh, to point B um, uh, faster. And many times with less danger. Or oh, I'll talk to the other side. Tunnels, they create, when you, when you go through that tunnel, um, when you go through the tunnel, it, when, when you come out, you, and you can feel the car rising as it comes out, and you look back and you say, Lord, look at all that water. And then you start tripping, you're like, man, what if that water had a caught me in that tunnel? Y'all ain't talking over here, let's see. You, you look back at the. You look back at the. At, at when you come out the tunnel and you say, "Lord, I'm so grateful." Some of y'all are going through a temporary tunnel right now, and it's longer than you had expected it to be. But when you come out, you look back at the problem, and you said, "If the Lord hadn't been on my side, I never would have come through that." I never would have chosen that route. But God, in his mercy, takes us through tunnels to get us where he wants us to be. Through all the danger that's on top. I'm so glad that God don't let, I'm, I'm glad God don't let us see on top because we probably freak out. What, what I just said to you, when you're going through your problems, I'm glad God don't show us everything. He, he don't show us all the stuff. He lets us see some of what we've been through. But when you come through, you look back and say, I can't do nothing but throw up my hands and throw back my head and say, thank you. Tell him my problems don't last. Tell God, say, thank you for my tunnels. They make you a little uncertain for a moment. But, but, but when you come through, Lord, have mercy. Of light afflictions, they only last for a moment. But can I tell you? They put you where God wants you faster. Don't you like that? When you go through your tunnels, when you go through your afflictions, they get you to a place faster and less danger than you would have if you're taking your own route. Tell God thank you. Uh, y'all know about tunnels, right? 
Let me remind you of a brother that knew about tunnels. His, his name was Jonah. Jonah got caught in a tunnel. In a whale. That's, that, that, that swallowed him alive. And said, do y'all know the Lord speak well? The Lord speaks to the well and says, he's supposed to be over there. My preferred future for him is over there. But he's trying to run that way. But my preferred future is over there. The whale said, I'm on assignment. I wish I was preaching better. The whale said, I got an assignment. That I got to look you up. I got to swallow you up and not digest you so that I can deliver you to where the creator wants you to be. Some of you in the belly of a whale right now. But don't you worry about that problem. It's going to get you where to where God wants you to be. Somebody ought to jump to your feet and say thank you. That he's working it out. He's working it out. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know it makes you cry. I know you want to just, 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 uh, Lord have mercy. But, you, but just listen. Joy will come in the morning. Tell, 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 tell the Lord, said, I'm coming through this tunnel. I'm coming through my light affliction. I'm coming through this. Number one, don't lose heart. Say it with me. Number one, don't lose heart. Number two, transitions don't last. Tunnels, they don't last. But they get us to where they want it, God wants us to be. Here's the last one. You ready for it? You ready? You sure? It, it's so easy. Focus on the beyond. With me? Focus on the beyond rather than what you see. Okay. When I was a little boy, and I'm through, you got to learn to focus on what you really want. Dr. Kemp, I'm sure those of you who study to get to higher, higher education or whatever you do, the to go to the, be the CEO or go to be the vice president, you have to focus and say, that's my goal. And in your mind, and sometimes even in your words, you say what you want. Okay, y'all. When you see something, you need to say something, right? You with me? Y'all heard it, right? See something, say something. But when I was a little boy, um, many, many, many years ago, but I heard they, they no, not too many, but, but I heard they, they brought it back. There was this toy, not yet, there was this toy that I wanted really bad. Uh, Dr. Nicole, I, I wanted this toy. Many of you know I grew up in a very rural uh, uh, community and um, was not very sophisticated. It was, um, okay, I grew up in the country. <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted this toy. And I kept bothering my mother about getting me this toy like some of your children and grandchildren do. And it was called real simple. It was called a C. Y'all had the toy. Do y'all remember the C and say? So, some of y'all got them now, don't you? You 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 still got yours from when you were. Or you guys, are trying, you know, it's, it's the little toy that's a little round. And, and when you pull the string, it goes, y'all had it. And it would point to an animal. Uh, Madam Mayor, I wanted this toy. And I kept bothering my mama about, Lord, I want this toy. I want to see and say. She took me outside one day. And she said, listen here. You live on a farm. 
and all them animals that's on that toy, they right here. <laughs> she said, you point and say what they are. I'm finished because y'all ain't with me. She said, she said, I know you want a C and say, but you are to C. Y'all with me now? You don't see and say with this physical man. You see and say with the, phys with the spiritual man. You tell the spiritual man what you see, you got to say it. I'm finished because y'all ain't going to help me. Because when I look out and see something with the physical nature that tells me this is the way it's going to be. My spiritual man says, uh-uh, that ain't the way it's going to be. You're supposed to see what you see and say what the Lord has shown you in the spirit. You got to see it and say it from your spiritual man. You are to what? See. Uh, come, come, come on. You are to and stand to your feet. Let's go home. You got to learn to see with your spiritual man and say, because that is the one that gets results. All I'm trying to get you to do is speak to your mountains. See them removed. See it the way God sees it. Ask God to give you his eyes so that you can say what God sees. You think God looks at you and says, oh, they got a whole lot of problems. Look at them problems. You think God, God is putting us in a position to look at our situation with our spiritual, with our scriptural mind and say, this problem ain't going to last. I'm bigger and better than my problem. Greater is he that is in me than he that is within the world. You got the ability, the supernatural ability to see and say, to speak to your problems, to speak to your health, to speak to your finances, to speak to your marriages, to speak to your children and see it as God sees it. So somebody say, I need God eyes. I need. This morning when you leave, I want you to see beyond. Stop looking at the reality and let your spiritual man look at what's beyond and say, God, that's what I see. And I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to say it. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to say it. And I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to say it. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to stand on it until I see the manifestation of it. In the movie, Taraja says, and then Kevin Costner says, it's, it hadn't been developed yet. The math that was looking for and what they were trying to do, get man on a moon. He said, it's like shooting a BB into space and trying to get that BB to land where you want it to. Some of your situations may look impossible, but you got to see beyond. Know that God is taking you through the tunnel. Your afflictions won't last. But when you look back at it, thank you, Lord. We walk by faith and not by, thank you, Lord. Don't lose heart. Keep going, brothers and sisters. Don't give up. Do not lose heart. And when you see it, say something with your spiritual man to it. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we love you today. We thank you for the word of God, and we thank you that you give us the ability to see beyond. Father, I pray that you would open the eyes of your people. Open their spiritual eyes that they may see. Like Paul tells us, that these light afflictions are not to be compared to what you have in store for us. And I pray, Lord, that those who are here today that get caught up in what they see, Father, that you would give them your eyes, that you would let them change their focus from on the current circumstances 
For God, you are a deliverer. You're going to bring us out of Egypt. You're going to bring us out of bondage, whatever it is. Maybe it is financial bondage. You're going to bring us out. Father, whatever we're going through today, I pray that our spiritual man will speak. That we will not lose heart. That we will not lose faith. But we will stand. And having all done all to stand, help us to stand therefore. Thank you for it. We give you praise and glory. In the name of Jesus.